during these few minutes of silence, you can focus on something you're grateful for or someone you're remembering, especially today, or just the pace of your own breath. Will you find that comfortable place in your seat and take a few easy breaths as we settle into our shared silence together. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of life and love, God of many names and no name, source of all. We give thanks for this time together, this set apart time. For this day, for love and care and community, for the beating heart of life around us, even through fear, uncertainty, repression, disease, and change. We pray for those who protest still, for those who resist, for those who scream that holy no at the injustice of the world. We pray for their safety for the world they dream of to be realized, for the holy yes. We pray for those who are sick and those who are afraid and those who are alone. May they be healed in some way, even if there is no cure. May they be strengthened. May they find themselves always in good company even and especially if that company cannot be physical. When we are afraid, we pray for courage. When we are triumphant, we pray to be merciful. When we are downtrodden, we pray to be lifted up. When we are joyful, we pray to remember, to share it. When we are in mourning, we pray for the easing of our pain. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not love. Amen.
Our reading this morning comes to us from the poet Barbara Henderson, Prayer for a Ten-Speed Heart. Let the fire of my body propel and warm me, and let each darkness reveal its plenitude. Let the hills flatten under my wheels, and let the eloquent curves yield up their good surprise. Let my heart be obstinate when I need the climb, and let my lowliest gears restrain my spinning down. Let there be flat land too, and in, into that glittering place, let me stretch with the heart of a lover at full speed, blind and intent. Before I start this sermon, I'm going to ask you to turn your videos on again, just really quick, if you're comfortable. If you're not, that's okay. If you just want to sit like a visitor in the back, that's okay. All right, it's just good to see your faces. You can turn them off again. We do that to save bandwidth. The American Buddhist nun Pema Chodron says it like this, the only time we ever really know what's going on is when the rug's been pulled out and we can't find anywhere to land. We use these situations either to wake ourselves up or put ourselves to sleep. This is from her book, When Things Fall Apart, sitting appropriately on my shelf these many months. She says that whatever it is, this very moment is the perfect teacher. It doesn't mean it's good or pleasant or righteous, but it is the perfect teacher. This very moment is the perfect teacher. I confess to you that I struggle enormously with that idea, which is among the many reasons that I am not a Buddhist nun. Although for perhaps they struggle with it too. This very moment is the perfect teacher. I find myself thinking, really? This one? You couldn't have picked some other moment before the pandemic, maybe, or in some alternate timeline where we're not suffering under capitalism and the effects of colonialism and white supremacy, where we had no need for uprisings, where everyone got home safe, where parents and teachers weren't falsely pitted against each other as if the care of children is individual or optional. This moment is the perfect teacher. In this moment, I find myself thinking, will anything ever be good again? Dramatically in that tone, the title of our sermon this morning. And I wonder if you find yourselves thinking that too. Will we ever have church as we loved it again? Will we ever see our faraway families? Will anything ever be the same? Will we hug again? Will we shake hands again? Will we go to parties without fear again? Will the places I have known and loved be forever changed? Maybe you keep these questions locked up in the recesses 
of your mind. You try not to look at them or indulge in them or pay too much attention to them. Maybe they come out at night and keep you up. Maybe you can't sleep for fear. Maybe they emerge in the quiet moments during your day. Maybe they appear in your dreams. Maybe you haven't let them in too much. You're just focused on trying to get through the day, but you know they're around you, waiting on the other end of the phone, on the lips of a loved one. And all of us casting around like frightened children saying, when will it be over? And what will become of us? Will anything ever be good again? An off the wall reference for you to lighten the mood at the very beginning of the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. We see a destroyed ship and some debris floating. And one guy on the deck of the ship goes, everyone's thinking it, I'm just saying it, pirates. And about this question, will everyone ever, will, will anything ever be good again? Whenever I think that, I also have to think, everyone's thinking it, I'm just saying it. And we don't know much, but we do know these things. It did not have to be this way. We are profoundly beautifully and painfully interdependent. And we do the best we can with what we've got. We know that we are interconnected. We read about it. You hear about it every week from me. We know it in our minds, but my God, we used to feel the evidence of it more fully in our bodies, didn't we? When we fed each other and hugged each other, when we held each other's hands. Now we are left with the ache, the lack, the longing. And those are teachers too. So if we are to let this moment be the perfect teacher, then there are three things we need, I think. First, we need a burning clarity that it did not have to be this way. We strive to live full lives of meaning and purpose, and in order to do that, we need to face the world as it is, even though we long for the world as it could be. It did not have to be this way. We did not need to be in a position where parents and teachers are being falsely pitted against one another, as if reopening schools is worth the price of lives, as if working and parenting at the very same time is actually possible or sustainable, as if the solution is individual families trying their best to make individual impossible choices. It did not have to be this way. The scale and spread of the virus in our country was preventable. And when finally it is over, those who profit from this suffering shall be called to account. There will be political consequences for letting so many people die, so long as we never let the story be twisted away from the truth. It did not have to be like this. As you befriend the present moment, as you try to accept that this moment is the perfect teacher, whisper to yourself that it did not have to be this way. The second thing, the crucial thing, are the small pleasures. Like the poet says, let the fire of my body propel and warm me and let each darkness reveal its plenitude. Snatch small pleasures wherever you can without apology. Inhabit them fully. Maybe you are taking calculated and planned risks to cherish the things that sustain you and matter the most to you. Maybe you are not taking those risks, but you can still find something fun or salty or sweet or cool or funny to look forward to. The glory of summer is in the shock of sensation, I think. Hot air, cool water, beating sun, cold popsicles. I think this is part of the appeal of travel, actually, not about the wonders to see, but the shock of sensation and newness. 
And so my friends, this is the time to indulge what is considered a vice. I think this is a time to be a glutton for small pleasures. In your pursuit of these small pleasures, you may encounter disappointments and heartbreaks, all the things you cannot do, all the things you long for. But there is something life-saving about being in touch with your powerful hungers. Even if those hungers, especially for new experiences, make quarantine dreadful. You can mourn those things as you take events and gatherings you had looked forward to off your calendar as Times you used to cherish as like physical, visceral memories of joy and fun and pleasure are changed to virtual experiences. You can mourn the loss. It doesn't matter that not being able to go on some vacation isn't the same as someone dying. There is room under the sun in the great interconnected picture of the whole world in the heart of God for all of it. What are you learning from your appetites? What can your powerful hungers teach you about what you most cherish? There is something holy about that ache. The ache is always a teacher. And you can arrive at the lessons in your own time. You don't have to skip your rage or mourning or pain or sorrow or minimize them in order to learn from the ache and the hungers. Third, silence. Of all the spiritual disciplines, this one seems the simplest and also the hardest. Silence is a teacher too. Perhaps you meditate in groups or alone. Perhaps you join our very own Deep River Sangha on Wednesday evenings. Maybe you learn the ancient religious practices of contemplation. Maybe you study yoga or breath work, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just sit sometimes in the silence, either the precious quiet you snatch for yourselves at odd hours in your rowdy house or the abundance of quiet you may be often trying to fill in your empty home. You just sit sometimes in the silence like we do for two minutes every Sunday morning, like we practice every week, and you sit without distraction, gathering the courage to face what is. Will anything ever be good again? Is the somewhat dramatic question I pose to myself, often in the middle of the night. It is indicative, I think, of how out of control this whole thing feels, maybe my own need to predict. And perhaps you are like me in that way. So in the uncertainty around us, be comforted by moral clarity, by small pleasures, by the power of silence, those three tools we need to befriend the present moment, the moment that is the perfect teacher, and be comforted by this, our community, where we gather every week to seek ever more loving ways of being human. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. Will you rise in body or in spirit for our closing hymn tomorrow, as seen in our General Assembly worship a few weeks ago? The words will appear briefly on the screen, and they repeat. They're very simple. Let the wave wash over me. I am already under. There will be better days. If you look closely, you can see our very own Susan Hill adding her voice 
to the video. There will be better days. 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 